In this demonstration, I will show you how to create this 3D soccer cleat going from design to final image in just a few minutes using the Adobe Substance 3D Pipeline. For today's purpose, this pipeline will include the Substance 3D Asset Library, Substance 3D Sampler, Substance 3D Painter, Substance 3D Stager, and Photoshop. To start, we need a soccer cleat model to work with. For that, we navigate to the Adobe Substance 3D Asset Library and search for shoe. You can see that we have a bunch of shoes to choose from, but I will go ahead and download this cleat asset. Now we need a plan of attack for it. For this design, I wanted to make a sports shoe based on the color palette I used for my personal website and branding. I will lean heavily on the blue and magenta color for my base and allow the brighter orange color to be the accent. To simulate a production environment, I also wanted to create a limitation on the actual material. For this one, I wanted to say that our shoe company has a great price on this leather material and I already have a scan of it to get rolling. Great, so let's start from there. In order to apply this scanned fabric swatch onto our 3D model, we need to access Substance 3D Sampler. Sampler is an incredibly simple, powerful tool that gives you the power to turn photographs or scans of real-world objects and transform them into digital material assets. First, we need to pull the scan into our software. I can take advantage of the AI-powered processing to give a first pass at this texture in Sampler. A quick note that we do have the power to process the actual physical size of the scan if we wanted. The software reads the DPI of the scan and can assure you that what you are seeing on screen will accurately match the proportions of reality. We will leave this unchecked for this project because our shoe model isn't quite set up for real world sizing, but just know that that feature exists and can be used in your pipeline. As you can see, this first pass of the scan isn't exactly what we're looking for, but lucky for us, Sampler has some fantastic tools to get us where we need to be. So the first thing that you notice is the repetition of the pattern. Our goal with any swatch or any element is to make it tileable so it can be tiled across an entire larger asset like a shirt or a sh in our case a shoe. The first thing we want to do to achieve that goal is to average out the values of the individual swatch so the repeating isn't as noticeable. A great place to start is the equalize node. Equalize is something I add to almost any sampler project. You can see it pretty quickly balances things out and gives you some parameter controls for fine tuning. The next step is dealing with those edges a little. Our eye is really good at picking up these super straight edges, even though the values are very close together. To break that up, we're gonna use the tiling function. This allows us the ability to create an imperfect, janky edge line that will be harder for our eyes to pick up this transition. From here, we can continue to define the look of this leather by adding some color or even a little coat on top to give it some more shine, but I actually prefer to do that inside Substance Painter, so we will leave the raw leather for now and send it over to Substance Painter by clicking this little box to the side and saying send to Substance 3D Painter. Now we have our 3D model and our brand new leather material. You can see the model is perfectly set up and already broken up into different texture sets, which is awesome. So let's actually start in the upper section. This is the main body of our shoe and I will go ahead and add this leather. Now I will resize it down and make sure the height is where I want it. For the color, I am going to add our base blue color. I want to go a little flashy with this design, so let's give it a metallic finish and take the roughness down to 0.3. Next, let's give it some additional textural elements. Because one of the things that I noticed when researching cleats online, there are a lot of designs that make the shoe almost look like a tire. I like this idea because it emphasizes the speed of the athletes, so let's do that. I will click this little button in Painter, which will open our asset library in the Creative Cloud library. I will search for our mountain bike tire texture and send that directly back into Painter. Now I will drag and drop it onto that section of the shoe and position it where I want. As you can see, the tread is in the middle of our map, so I will actually need to duplicate it and then transform that second one over a bit so it is one continuous pattern. Now let's go ahead and get the scaling, position, and height right and add a gradient to the mask so that it's just a little bit on the toe. For the back half of this section, let's add another textural element. 
So I played around with this a lot and I actually found this super cool ductwork material in our asset library. When you add that to the shoe, I think it really does add a lovely little textural element. So I'll add that to the back half and go ahead and create another gradient to make that kind of fade into that tire pattern in the front half of that section. Now that we have our textural elements in place, it's starting to feel a little bit too much bling for this. So I'm gonna take back that metallic leather a little bit. But instead of rolling back the whole thing, I'm actually gonna create a second section. Let's create a new layer that only influences the roughness and metalness and reduce those down a little bit. Now let's create a black mask and a paint sublayer. Now we can paint on the toe where we want this new, more matte material. Let's go ahead and activate that lazy mouse feature here to create a nice, smooth curve even though we are freehanding it. Now that we have that in place, let's add a bit of stitching. Stitching is easy peasy in Painter. All we have to do is make a new paint layer, grab our dynamic stitch brush, and scroll down to select that nice orange highlight color from our color palette. We can do a fancy double stitch to separate these two areas. Again, you can either use the lazy mouse feature, or perhaps it would be better for you to hold down the shift key to create some straight lines with your stitching. We will also add a single stitch section around this part of the shoe so it can attach to the tongue area. Okay, for now let's call this section done and we will move on to the other upper section of the shoe. For that, let's start with the base texture. To apply that, we can go back into the original upper section, right click on the leather and say Estantiate Across Texture Sets. Select the upper one section. This will link these two sections together through a process called instancing. Instancing will allow you to change the settings in the one main area and all of those settings will get filtered down into the other areas that you have applied that material to. With that in place, let's use our other base color, this more magenta one. Let's take down the roughness a little bit to give it that harder material look. Now let's get some fun in this section. I will copy that color layer and create another one that is just a slight bit darker. Let's add a black mask for that and a fill sublayer. Inside that fill sublayer, we are going to add the dot gradient map. Now we need to update our parameters and position this map where we want to create a cool dot gradient. Now we just need to add a single stitch around the perimeter and I think we're good to go. Moving on to the sole, this will definitely be a harder plastic so we don't need the leather. We can start with a glossy plastic default and select our base color. Now we will create another layer and give it some full metalness. Don't change the color, just change the metalness. Now we can add our black mask and fill sublayer, and we can add a brand new pattern that I really love called the paper path. Go ahead and adjust the size of these lines and give it a little bit of disorder if you like and call it done. For the studs, this is a great opportunity to sprinkle in that bright orange highlight color. So let's add a plastic base again and select our bright orange color. Inside the shoe, we want to create a nice soft lining. For that, I will add one of my favorite base substance materials. This is the Fabric Vintage Suit. Honestly, I don't remember if this is a painter by default or if you need to add it from the asset library. Either way, I love it. I recommend you get it and use it a lot. So let's drop that in here, scale it down, and add the colors from our color palette into this color selection. For the tongue of the shoe, let's start with our leather base again. We will add some fill layers on top with our favorite magenta and blue colors. For the magenta, we can add this cool gray pattern and scale it down. It's a little boring just as a change of color, so let's go ahead and give it a little bit of height and add a little bit more to the pattern. There we go. And onto our laces. For the laces, I love using our climbing rope. We can just pop that on there and scale it down into place. For the colors, let's do what we did for the lining on the inside and just add our favorite colors to the selection area here. All right, so I'm ready to call this shoe done and let's go ahead and send this over to Stager. We're going to do that by going to File, Send To, Send To Substance 3D Stager. It takes a second for Stager to open and load the file, but when it does, it brings over all the materials in place so you can just keep rocking and rolling away. Now we can stage it and light it up as we see fit. For this example, I want to integrate it into our scene with the rock. Super easy to do here. Just create a camera, 
add this moody image to our background from Adobe Stock, and then select the Match Image button. This is our tool that utilizes Adobe's Sensei AI technology to do some amazing stuff. It sets our render to the same resolution as the background plate. It reads the background plate to understand the lighting and does its best to replicate that in our scene. And it analyzes the image to determine the angle, position, and focal length of the camera so our digital camera matches the backplate. It's some pretty amazing and time-saving stuff. With that in place, we can render it out in our Render tab, export a layered Photoshop file, and import it straight into Photoshop. Now we can do all of our fantastic Photoshop magic, and with that workflow, we can generate our designs and output some super compelling images in a very short period of time.